Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've switched gears from Starladder EU now over to Starladder America. I'm Zayori flying solo in the studio, but now joined remotely by BTS Gods. We've got a best of five series coming your way for the grand finals of Starladder America. This is do or die, the complete end of it. The winner of this series will secure a spot in Kiev for the land finals, and the loser will have to just try again next season. Evil Genius is coming in with a one game advantage over the Sneaky Nicks Assassins, but it's still anyone's series for the taking. Parker, how you feeling, man? What's the good word looking at 6.82? It's it's time. We're here. It's a, a new era of Dota, and we're going to see who sinks and who swims, because these teams have to adapt fast. Uh, being thrown into a best of five to decide who's going to the land funnels for a turn with over $250,000 of prize money as of today. Um, interesting that we just passed 250 k just today, so uh, for those of you with a ticket, I think there's going to be a new courier being released with the compendium, so look out for that soon. But as far as this BO5 is concerned, this is, this is all about adapting to the new patch. Yeah, certainly so, and we see already Sneaky Nix Assassins grabbing one of these new heroes released into Captain's Mode. A terror Blade inciting fear in the, into the hearts of enemies. Uh, he did get minorly buffed along with his entrance into Captain's Mode, and uh, the cast point on Sunder now slightly reduced, down from half a second to 0.35. So not Ten the biggest buff remaining. in the world, but um, have you had any chance to play around with him in competitive or uh, ca see any games where he's been picked Evil up? He's only been banned in the games that I've gotten ban. to cover so far. The Terra Blade? Yes. I've seen him, I casted one game with Coddle Guy where we saw Terra Blade, which was Myth Trust in Starlet at SEA. They lost the game, but... It was d definitely a good impact coming out of Lakels on the Terra Blade, and I think Color Guy Speed Cast is another game where Terra Blade just kind of flopped in the Canada Cup. So he he was saying Lakels did better than anyone. I, I think this hero is man. kind of situational. He's very squishy and he's kind of one dimensional in that he's got huge physical damage output and he's a really strong pushing Evil hero. Uh, it's kind of like a pick. physical damage version of a Death Prophet. Well, I mean, Death Prophet's Radiant physical damage with the Ghost, pick. but kind of like an agi carry version of a Death Prophet. Right, but more one-dimensional because death prophet you have a silence you have crypt swarm for aoe creep clear um this hero is just like death prophet with just the exorcism but like a really fucking good exorcism so mm -hmm. you kind of know it's coming when you see the terror blade pick i feel yeah now evil genius is open with elder titan and brewmaster and elder titan was one that now has a, a shiny new agonim scepter Ten upgrade that remaining. might not be so relevant here but it does add a disarm uh, and slow effect Five to anyone caught inside remaining. of the earth splitter um, that makes me wonder, is this Elder Titan, you think, in an effort to try and counter the Terror Blade a little bit? Reserve time. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a really good kind of, I think a pretty good kind of push hero. I think you're right there, because uh, especially now you can go for one or two points in the Echo Stop like we saw Universe do the other day when we were casting and play the Elder Titan. I think that's one way of dealing with these annoying push it pushes. It just helps stall, give time for your teammates to either TP in. Because the problem is, if you see a terrible pushing a tower, you TP to the tower, he runs away, and this hero's got ridiculous movement speed, especially if you go for like a Sanjin Yasha or a Boots of Travel build, and you TP in to defend your tower, but you don't kill him. When you TP to defend, you want to get kills, which is where Echo Stomp could be able to set that up, and then you kind of follow that with your TPs in. Mm -hmm. And even before the patch, uh, you and I got to cast a couple of games where we saw Universe uh, picking Elder Titan, uh, heading to the offlane, and experimenting around a little bit with Echo Stomp being leveled up earlier than uh, that Ten kind of classic build of 0-4-4-0. And in the patch, uh, Natural Order got a little bit of a buff Five in the early levels. Remaining. So now if you think of them as value points, uh, they become even more valuable, maybe uh, synergizing Reserve with that style time. that Universe per starting to prefer a bit. Uh, but now EG grabbed the Wisp, another hero that wasn't really touched all that much in the patch, but the change of the runes really uh, gives gives Io a, a bit more potential in terms of keeping that bottle topped Phantom off. Assassin. Yeah, uh, it's definitely going to I mean, make mid heroes a bit more like the the kind of bottle reliant mid heroes that don't want to have to bottle crow as much more more the stronger. And also the, the ganking oriented one. So Brewmaster, you find an early rune, you're guaranteed to get a rune, and if it's not a haste or an invis or something you can gank with you can still go back mid lane with your refilled bottle from a bounty run and continue to farm but if you get that haste or invis suddenly you can gank a side lane and look to go from there so mm -hmm. I, I i like the rune change a Ten lot it's definitely one of my favorite things about the new pa the new patch um there's a lot of adjusting and trying to accept Five the new patch and remaining. there's some stuff i'm still skeptical about but 
There's a lot of things I'm really happy about, and the rune change is definitely one of them. Reserve yeah, time. now EG will move into a Phantom Assassin, a hero that they were running quite a bit again before this patch. Uh, probably your Arteezy hero, and when paired with the Wisp, uh, can certainly pack to quite man. the punch. But here you go, Ogre McGee picked up by the Sneaky Nyx Assassins, and he was buffed up quite significantly, uh, the most significant of which probably his health regen, now 2.5 up from 0.25, and uh, that times 2 multicast, now a lot Ten more frequent. Remaining. Yes, um, I think he's still most likely just going to be staying as that like four remaining. position support, but he's just going to be a whole lot stronger as a four position support with the uh, HP regen. Uh, most supports you see going tranquil boots anyways, but this means just like the pre tranquil boots. If you're in a trial and versus trial, even like a trial and versus an offline, like often you're harassing them and taking damage. Having that higher base regen really actually helps quite a lot. It's kind of like an inbuilt tranquil boot, Radiant just a slightly weaker back. version. So mm -hmm. uh, you don't have. Uh, we may still see tranquil boots, but often supports want to go for the arcanes, and that's where Ogre Magi is going to be a good candidate to get the fast arcanes and not worry about his HP regen as much. Yeah, uh, definitely so. Uh, Disruptor Ten also picked up by remaining. the Sneaky Nix Assassins. That is that classic white beard hero that we've talked about uh, oh so much. You'll even often uh, see the Disruptor kind of respect Evil band out uh, against the white beard. But here he'll get to play uh, Fish's Wish as it is. And a uh, great hero to have against a Wisp with uh, the, the glimpse whenever he relocates in. So final bands coming out. Quop as well as the Jakiro. We'll see what these teams want to do with their fifth and final picks. Yeah, for EG, looks like the three core hero should be pretty established with Elder Titan, Brewmaster, PA. Uh, unless we're going to see some kind of four position three. Elder Titan, which has been done in the past. But mm -hmm. probably just looking for come some kind of, uh, let's say, Zai support, depending. I think going for greedy supports is more the style of this patch. Uh, you don't want to have Reserve two like true hard supports because supports are getting more far, more levels with the new, the new bounty and golden XP earning from kills. Combined with the bounty runes, I think you want to get like you always want to have I'd say at least kind of one fairly high impact support that can benefit from the farm, which isn't really a wisp. So getting something like a you know, sand king, which has been banned out, but otherwise getting some kind of a, a jungler is still quite strong. The enigma is still actually in the pool, so eg if they want to stick with the enigma, can definitely do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, would be an option for them. They'll have thirty seconds left to decide. Uh, Undying has also gotten a ban out here, which is uh, a little bit interesting. He was buffed up just a pinch. Um, you know, just interesting to see him uh, getting some ban priority. EG also banning out the Dazzle, another support that probably would have worked okay for them in that regard. They'll instead go with the Lion. So uh, get some burst damage and plenty of crowd controls here out on the field with the Hex and the Earth Spike. Was Lion changed? Because I saw a Lion pick in the last game you were casting. A, a little bit. Earth Spike does a little more damage at the first two levels. Uh, so okay. basically nothing. Uh, that spell is pretty asset level, like one level two, though. So I, yeah. I think it's it definitely makes up for when they hear his biggest weaknesses, which is his laning. Like, I think looking at the popular supports of the last patch, Ten so many of them really. were picked because of how good they were at level one, level two for zoning out off lane. Skyrath, obviously, the best example he could destroy an offlaner at level 1 with arcane bolt spam. Shadow Shaman, when he was really popular, was partly because of the Aethershock at level 1 doing so much damage. Jakiro's got good harass level 1 and Lion. Earth Spike, you wouldn't even get Earth Spike level 1 because it was so bad. You'd go Hex over it. So I think buffing Earth Spike at level 1, level 2, it may sound like a small buff, but I think it could make quite a big difference for this hero. Yeah. Um, and uh, just I, I know how much you love a good PPD tweet and just about an hour before this game started and I quote I've been playing Go Dota S games since StarCraft 1 custom maps these new gold and XP changes are totally absurd so the uh, EG captain has spoken and PPD is is not so excited it's definitely the the, the thing in which the community has the most polarizing re reactor that, which is unfortunate because there's so many awesome things about the new patch some of the hero changes the different hero re reworks, which I'm really excited for, the rune changes. I'm not crazy about the Roshan. I, I, I like Roshan moving, although I'm still not thrilled about the whole bottom rune area. It's very confusing and it feels less dynamic. But I think it's just sad that this whole like golden XP change is what everyone's focusing on. Which, I mean, you're always going to focus on the negative, but there's so much cool stuff in the new patch at the same time. Yeah, uh, I kind of agree. Uh, we'll see how it works out, though. Just thought I'd share that little tidbit before we get into the game. Again, guys, it is a best of five for the grand finals here. This is the final matchup 
of Star Ladder America for Season 10, and it is a one-game winner's advantage. That's how EG was rewarded for climbing their way through the winner's bracket, where Sna did have to battle it out against Navi US yesterday, where uh, the patch dropped halfway through that loser's bracket <laughs> final <laughs> series. So uh, Sna did win it 2-0, but uh, did, did spice things up just uh, a little bit there. Looking at lanes, Sneaky Nick's Assassins will be fairly straightforward. IX Michael take the Batrider off lane. Ush will go solo mid on the Tidehunter, uh, which does give them a safe lane try. TC the on the position begins. one Terra Blade, uh, Fluff here on the Disruptor, and that does put Whitebeard on the Ogre. So interesting to see Whitebeard not playing his Disruptor. Uh, instead, he'll be on the, the big tanky yeah. Ogre. I'm I'm really surprised by that. This guy was the Disruptor of the TI3 qualifiers, but maybe he just hasn't played it much since then. I. I don't know, maybe he's a prodigy on the Ogre Magi, and this buff is what he's been waiting for to make his big comeback. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Definitely not, not the expected player hero setup from, from the Nyx Assassins. No, definitely not. Uh, dire side will have evil geniuses. A universe will be off lane on the Elder Titan, and uh oh could be in some trouble already. We'll take the stun from Whitebeard. Path of Lock coming about, but won't be there, and the kinetic field will be off the mark. And uh, universe yeah. will survive the initial onslaught. Yeah, I, I was the TP skill. But often you'd think, oh, you should go reflection, but the metamorph gives so much damage that I think it's TC's on the right thing, skilling it up. But unfortunately, without the kinetic field, or maybe could have gone for a glimpse. Although glimpse level one, you'd have to get fairly close to cast. But yeah, that's still okay. I, I think with TC, sure you use the metamorph cooldown, but it just helps you last hit and lane control so well that it's actually an okay skill in the early laning stage to somewhat spam. So yeah, I think they're not too fast. Yep. Mid lane, it will be uh, Arteezy on the Phantom Assassin, joined by Zai playing on the Wisp, and that does leave PPD here on the Lion, and the safe lane farming Fear, who will take point on the Brewmaster, who should find a fair bit of farm here. That's one hero that wasn't really touched uh, in the patch all too much, so he is in uh, he is in good shape, just as strong as ever. Uh-oh, yeah. mid lane though, Ush, this could very well be your first blood as Arteezy mans up. He does have those two value points, the Kraken Shell, as well as the Anchor Smash, and... <laughs> Talk about the worst time to pause. This is, there's potential for a turnaround here, actually. Uh, yeah, this will be close. They'll get the dagger and one or two right clicks. I think Ush goes down. He really needs that next anchor smash because um, yeah. the first one's about to wear off. This is also the, the, the newly nerfed anchor smash, so it doesn't do as much damage reduction as it used to do, which is it was a fairly solid nerf. I think that's appropriate. It still does the same amount at the max level, but now it just scales. So it's not that ridiculous value point of, yeah, good luck killing me, guys. Now it's still good, but I think 45% is uh, pretty appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I should be dead. He's got a Tango, which he can use uh, in exactly one second. But the problem is level one anchor smash, the cooldown doesn't match the duration. So there's that even even if he like survives the next couple right clicks, there's a full second where he doesn't have anchor smash on the PA and he should just be dead. And there's also bottle on Wiz, so Wiz will be able to heal him up. This is definitely first blood. Yep. And Arteezy throws the dagger, but no. What? They don't oh, commit TP for it. Fluff in. TP's in, glimpse that's, back onto the Wisp. Balls, and man. Is it the first blood the other way? Yeah, it sure is. Fluff and stuff draws it. Now Arteezy on the run will have a blink strike, makes it back to the creep wave, but the first blood goes the other way, and it is Disruptor okay. that reaps the benefits. Well, well the pause working in Nyx Assassin's favor, I guess, and... There was an EG pause, so there's, there's, there's no getting upset <laughs> yeah. about it. Yep, yeah, certainly right. So Ush will grab the Bounty wow, Rune here, fill up his bottle, and down bottom Fluff and Stuff will pick up the Illusion Rune, spawning at the two-minute mark. So good news for the Nyx Assassins all around. And TB, he's getting a lot of farm down here. He's almost the last hit leader, just about neck and neck with the Phantom Assassin and having a lot of room to farm. As ooh, ooh, They'll go right onto Ush again in the mid lane. Arteezy trying to decide how much he wants to commit to it. Doesn't want to get hit by the Anchor Smash. And they will be happy just to harass back Ush and then just go right back to farm. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of nice. The new TP change is 100 gold. It means you can go for these very early TP pickups on supports and rotate a lot more to help with these tower dives. So... Um, Ush does have that slight reassurance in the mid lane and already now level 3. Once he gets a few levels, that's where this potential aggression from EG mid really fades off. If they want to kill him, they needed to do it at level 1, level 2. Now that he's hit level 3, uh, probably going to get even a second point in Kraken Shell at level no Ghost Gush, but uh, he's just going to get really tanky here in the mid lane. Yeah, and um, the value point in Gush can be pretty good. It's pretty mana intensive, but uh, with those TP rotations like you're talking about, uh, it does help set up kills, and he is bottle crowing here and with some rune control. He will be able to have a mana pool that allows him to use Gush at least more than he would 
in the off lane. Uh, speaking of the off lanes here, Bat Rider not getting much. IX Mike finds his level two, but still zero and zero in terms of last hits. PPD doing a good job keeping him zoned out. Again in the mid lane, they'll go in onto us as he presses towards the creep wave. Only nine last hits, but at least he's finding experience, and that is uh, a pretty big deal in context of the Tide Hunter. Yeah, uh, a lot more farm on the PA, but time to get the levels. We'll get Ravage coming into play and. When he's got that, you can see maybe uh, another support rotation towards mid, be it another TP in from Fluff, maybe a smoke towards mid, and try and use that Ravage to, even if just getting a kill on the Wisp, just get some kills and momentum going the way of your team. Yep. This time Wisp will be the one to grab the Bounty Rune, but it's Tide Hunter who lucks out and finds the real one, and it will be an invisibility, so it gives him kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card if he gets jumped upon. But I think for now Artiz is just happy to, to rack up the farm. TB is in free farm heaven down bottom. Unifers has just sacrificed the lane. He moved into the jungle and just trying to get a baseline of farm. He is almost level 4, so ironically enough, still doing better than IX Mike. And uh, moving to the jungle has made his life a lot easier. Looks like Michael set his sights towards the jungle. No stacks for him to move into quite yet, but he'll be able to, to help himself to grabbing some neutral kills. Yeah. So, uh, I think as far as the early game concerned, EG... Even though that dive mid didn't work out, they're just kind of out farming their opponents in most of these lanes. Brewmaster doing well top, and sure, trading Brew Farm for a TB Farm sound, sounds bad on paper, but is going to be a mid game threat. He's going to be getting the fast blink, looking to go from there, control the tempo of this game. Whereas TB, he can only do control the game as much as he can apply pressure to towers. He doesn't have that team fight. He can team fight pretty well with Metamorph, but not on the same level of like utility that a Brewmaster ultimate gives you. Right. Yeah, and that's the big difference in, in where they'll peak. And TB can get some early farm now, but if they kill him a few times in the mid-game, maybe they can bring him back down to planet Earth. Uh, kind of curious to see exactly what build TC goes for. Right now, just Aquila brown boots, nothing too crazy about it. Uh, any thoughts about kind of the ideal Terrorblade build? Um, I know, it, I think it depends a bit on the style of play. Like, there's a really strong pub build, which is like Sanjin Yasha boots to travel, and you focus entirely on split pushing. Mm -hmm. uh, mid lane though, there will be a bit of a, a kill attempt here. Oh, oh, Universe coming in and we'll have some follow up damage. They'll hop forward and finish off the Tide Hunter. Wisp actually gets credit for it, even though Arteezy is the one that blinks forward and does the bulk of the damage. Glimpse back onto the Wisp. Zai in some trouble, but he'll tether over the ravine and hop right to his buddy Arteezy. Sips down that bottle. They'll both get healed up and it'll be a successful kill on the solo mid Tide. And EG feeling good. Universe also helping out, so uh, that helps get him a little bit of extra experience and, of course, some gold from the assist. And the insta bottle refill, too. So six minutes hits, he knows he's going to get a rune, doesn't have to have that 50-50 chance, and Wisp is good to just stay mid with more, more region. This new Wisp is going to be really scary in the mid lane, I feel. I think it's going to become a fairly top pick again. Not Already it's a top pick for some teams, but even more so in 6.82 with the rune change. <laughs> no, I definitely agreed on that front. Uh, IX Mike will grab the haste rune that spawned down bottom. He spent some time in the jungle and now finds his Radiant's level 4 and he'll just continue on uh, farming up here. In the top lane, EG will move into the tier 1 tower and it looks like the same will happen down bottom Radiant as the Sneaky Nyx assassins start to press forward. Glyph comes out on the Radiant Radiant's side. It doesn't look like they'll mount the defense. Attack. Instead they'll look for the tower exchange, but this won't be too easy. Universe doesn't have Echo Stomp. Now the TP up from uh, just the Disruptor. Tower is getting pretty low. Wisp will use the Bounty Rune. Tether to Fear. Give him a little bit of extra mana. Fear's also Radiant's found his level 6. So if they try to defend attack. this, Primal Split will come out. And no, they will go down. Dire get the last fallen. hit. But first tower of the game goes the way of the Evil Geniuses, furthering their gold lead. Yeah. Not as much money as you used to get, but still pretty in important strategic milestones. It's not. It's still not going to be a Blink Dagger just yet for Fear, but he's very close. 150 away. He's going to have an 8-9 minute Blink Dagger with Arcane Boots, so look to him ganking very soon. He'll hit level Dyer's 7 and have the max out clap, and that's attack. where most of these here on the Radiant side will, on the Radiant side will just die to those ganks, with the exception of maybe something like a Batrider Fire flying over a ravine or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe Radiant's Tide can tank it up as well, but attack. even Tide will struggle to survive that. Yeah, and that big disparity in farm is, uh, well, we'll hold that thought as Ush in the mid lane will get initiated on. Allison looking for the proper opening, but knows that there's a Ravage, doesn't want to dive under the tower, and that TPs could be coming in. Also, Batrider off the map. They, map. they don't know where Mike is. They know he's not level 6, but still some potential there if he you know, has a stray point in flame break. Arteezy plays it safe. Seems to be the right call. Another bounty rune going the way of Wisp, and... This is also good news for Zai as he finds all this extra experience. Ush does use the Ravage this time as Arteezy jumps on him. Whitebeard coming in. Fire Blast in range of the tower. Arteezy taking a lot of damage and he will go down. 
So that's exactly what he was worried about the first time, and, well, this time, his fears are realized. Yeah, and speaking of fears, fear... This, those are the kind of fights he... I think if EG want to apply pressure there, they need fear showing up on the Brewmaster. He's got the money for his Blink Dagger. Hasn't bought it yet. I think he's just farming this last creep wave before he goes to the shop. But if he has his Blink TPs in there, that's an easy turnaround for EG. So uh, I think maybe just was a little short at the time that the fight started out. But this next time they, they go for any pressure mid lane, they'll be ready with that. Especially with Ravage on cooldown. Yep. Uh, bottom lane, TB still just farming away. Looks like he'll move into drums after uh, the power treads here. Has himself a bracer picked up. Uh, did do some decent damage to that bottom tier 1 tower, but has yet to bring it down. And Dyer still have their glyphs standing. So there is a disparity going that way in favor of EG. The gold graph, about 1,500 for the evil geniuses, but experience is leveled out as now the Bat Rider has jungled sneaking up. Sneaking down bottom to and gank TB. Yep. They'll smoke up. Fear has the Blink Dagger. He'll show it off right here. Goes on to Whitebeard. Connects with the clap. There's your split. Arteezy hops in. Whitebeard drops the Fire Blast. And now TB caught inside of the Cyclone. Can they bring him down fast enough? Sunder will be a, a serious threat here as IX Mike comes in. And yep, they'll burst him down as PPD gives him the finger. Arteezy caught inside of the lasso. Will burn down to the Fire. And it will be a two for one. Make it a two for three. As around the backside, Universe and our uh, Zyre there. They'll be able to finish off the Disruptor. He does get taken out by a neutral, but now Bat Rider gets left behind. And Evil Geniuses with a very convincing fight. Sure, there was a deny on the Disruptor, but doesn't take away anything from, uh, or doesn't take away much from that victory. And they steal the the neutral stacks of Bat Rider, which he was trying to work on there to get his Blink Dagger up. He was, I think, he maybe had it because he's sitting on two K two K gold right now. Uh, didn't buy the blink before he died, but good gank there, recognizing they want to gank the TB. The smoke was intended to find him. They found the ogre for, first, but they get the, t the Terror Blade anyway. So for EG, uh, they're going to be pretty happy with how things went down there. Asha up top. We'll just try to TP home. No way to interrupt him, and he will live. But yeah, now this Lion Pick kind of coming into focus a little more. That's one of the best ways to deal with TB. Just burst him down before he can have the opportunity to get off a good Sunder. Uh, exactly what we saw Radiant's right there. Uh, good setup from EG, attack. and now they'll just rotate mid and look to claim yet another tower. Of course, the Glyph has cooled down after they cleared out the top tier one, and they'll do some decent damage before backing out. And no need to force a fight here. They'll be happy just to sit back and force a reaction out of the Sneaky Nyx Assassins. Yep. The Nyx Assassins, they still just want to try and create as much space for TC as possible. Treads, Acolyte, looks like it'll just go for a Drums here, so much more teamfight-oriented build here with the Treads and the Drums just trying to tank up as many stats as possible and go from there. Yep, short range glimpse onto Arteezy. He takes a little bit of damage, but Zai will just relocate him back to the well and uh, bring him right back to uh, the mid lane. So sort of giving him a free top off there and also a haste rune in the bottle of Zai. So maybe they can set something up here as a lot of damage comes out onto Ush. The Wisp Balls fly through. He's fake pumping the anchor smash, but there's your Ravage as Ush moves into the tree line. Wisp will be able to finish him off. Disruptor with a static field and kinetic, but it won't be enough to find a turnaround kill. The haste is used, as are the drums from our... our uh, drums are used somewhere. Um, and that'll be it though. Just a one for nil. Now Fluff gets jumped on by Fear. Zai is there to tether up and Fear will just chase him down. A easy set of kills. Double for Zai. Now in the bottom lane, Whitebeard gets initiated on by Universe and PPD. He'll get turned into a frog and not even going to be able to get off the Fire Blast before he falls. So three kills coming out across the map and make it four. TC caught in the jungle and EG just picking them apart as they grab a lot of momentum here, gods. Yeah, they just, they're finding these Great little engagements here. They're not fighting full 5v fight into a Tide Ravage, into a Bat Rider with a Blink Lasso. They're just finding these smaller scale fights, which is where a Wisp PA can kind of shine. They find a couple kills, and then if they need to, they've got that reassurance of a relocate out. They can help their teammates if they do find a bigger scale engagement. And just really efficient play from EG all around the map. Yeah, Arteezy in the mid will get caught inside of the Lasso, looking to make the great escape. Won't find a rune that'll help him out too much. Just a, a bounty, and it looks like he will go down, relocate from Wisp. Coming in, but won't be able to save him, and he'll get glimpsed right back down from whence he came, and uh, we'll just be in the mid lane, not too far off, but nice recovery kill for the Sneaky Nyx Assassins. That's something, but they'll need just a little bit more than that. Brewmaster will find the Bat Rider, and wow, will the rest of the fight transpire as EG kind of on the back foot. Want to be a little bit careful about how they take this initiation. Wisp once again will fill up the bottle with this Bounty Rune, and it just feels like Zai is constantly topped off and has plenty of regeneration to go around. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's the new fountain, these bottles. Like, the Universe went for a bottle on the offlane, Elder Titan. This is 
We're going to see a lot more bottles on supports and offlaners, I think, with these rune changes. And well, it's, it's working well so far for EG, just being able to sustain. Wisp, it's great because he not only sustains himself, but it's all his teammates with the tether regen. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. And now EG will group up mid once more. Ush, no Ravage available for another 25 seconds. They'll jump on him. Finger almost brings Ooh. him down, but not quite. And the Tide will survive the onslaught, but no! Universe, he snipes Got him down him. with the Astral. Very nicely done. Yeah, and this should open up the tier 1 mid tower. Fear's going to zone everyone out. He's got no ultimate, but doesn't really need one per se. Yeah, he's not so scared. Mike has a lasso coming up in just a second, but Fear's pretty damn tanky as he has the point booster already. Glyph comes out, but it won't stop the tower from falling. No denial. Commence. At least it doesn't look like it. Now it will go down to the Dire, and EG just pulling further and further ahead now. Almost 7,500 gold and 5,000 experience. Oh, boy. You know, they tried to kind of take away snowballing with some of the gold changes and towers, but runes, definitely the double runes favors teams who are snowballing and have map control, because if you have a couple of balls on your team and you're guaranteed to be able to constantly regen up, it does help you snowball to some extent. So they nerfed some, as I mean, they nerfed the kind of bigger aspects of snowballing and the tower money you can get and the tier, the tier one tower glyph stuff, but double runes definitely favors an EG snowball right now. Yeah, absolutely. And now they'll just go bottom. There's a glyph, but it won't be enough to keep this tower alive. It doesn't look like Sneaky Nick's Assassins Radiant's will just hang out in the mid. And this bottom tower will go down. They won't even bother using the glyph to waste Radiant's some of their time. And that will be fallen. 3 to nil now in total tower count. And even more gold in the pocket of the Evil Geniuses. Universal will get the last hit on that one. And gets him one step closer to his mech. Only a couple Dyer's hundred gold away from the rest of it. Nice. EG team is... Been finding these good fights and good trades, tower kills and all that, without even some of these core items coming up. I mean, Fierce had his blink for all, but he's coming. Ag Scepter, Universal Hub, his mech. Uh, all around the board, there's just core items coming, as uh, Arteezy's also going to have his drums back at base as well, being picked up soon. All right, smoke from the Sneaky Nicks Assassins in the mid lane. And where are they headed with it? Looks like they'll move back into their jungle. PPD will be on the high ground. He sees an illusion. He gets pinged out. And he'll just back up to rendezvous with his buddies, but he'll get glimpsed into a kinetic, a kinetic field, static storm. And it looks like it'll be rough for him to survive. It certainly will, but the relocate is there. They'll clean up the ogre as well as the disruptor. Down goes the Terra Blade and EG. They may lose their PPD, their captain, their drafter, but they find vengeance and they get a great trade <laughs> yeah. out of it. That was so. That was just throwing everything for Lion. And the hilarious thing was Lion almost survived. He got out of the kinetic field, static storm. And it was like the last right click from the Terra Blade Radiant's that killed him. If that last uh, attack. elder attack didn't come off from Terra Blade, PPD lives after all those ulties, after an Ogre Fire Blast. Like, <sighs> that was just shows the desperate position the Nyx Assassins are in. Yeah. And as we can imagine, that gold lead is furthering. More and more items coming out. Wisp, uh, he's actually going into a buckler. So, hmm, mech has already Me? been completed on the Elder Titan. Maybe a miscommunication. Guard. Maybe a Crimson it's Guard. Crimson Guard, man. Yeah. It's Crimson Guard it's West. It's a really good item versus Terra Blade because it's all physical damage. So having like your whole team having that Vanguard block like like block of a Crimson Guard really negates the Terra Blade's power. So okay, um, that was the game I saw earlier today with uh, Myth Trust playing where they picked Terra Blade and the other team got a Crimson Guard and their Centaur in it. Really negated a lot of his damage. All right. Well, we'll see if that's what Zai's going for. Indeed, mid lane it'll be Ix Mike to initiate right onto Zai himself. It'll drag him right into the fray, and that'll be a dead wisp. They'll end that little killing spree and find a pretty penny there. Arteezy will get glimpsed back, hit by the flame break, but will be able to walk to safety. And now some support coming in. EG perhaps looking for a return kill. PPD quite fast with those tranquil boots finds the initiation onto Ush, but Whitebeard's there with a. 2x multicast. Now they'll follow up. They'll jump onto Whitebeard. Ravage flies through. Connects onto Artor. He'll take a lot of damage, but Mech gets used. That'll pick him back up. Fear off to the side, serving as an effective distraction, kind of breaking up this fight from Sna. They'll be on the back foot now, but Wisp will be coming up soon. Might be able to relocate in. Disruptor will fall to the Lion Earth Spike and that Astral Spirit jumping right on top of him. EG just too big right now. That Mech making all the difference in the world. Yeah, they are very sustainable. The mech, and then you've got Wisp who can show up and heal people as well. He wasn't. He did get picked off at the start of that fight, but if it's not the Elder Titan there with the mech, it's the Wisp there with the uh, overcharge as well as the, the bottle, the urn heals. So everyone on the EG side just very hard to kill. Like they got a glimpse back on Arteezy into three or four enemy heroes, and they just couldn't kill him. 
Yeah, mid lane, Ush with no Ravage available. Fear will capitalize. Thunderclap into the split. Hits him with a boulder, and now he'll just go to town, but support is there. Uh, the mech has been picked up onto the Tide Hunter, so he'll be able to top himself off. And now Fear on the defensive will try to back things out as the rest of EG start to group up around the mid lane. If Snar are not careful and perhaps overcommit, they may get punished. Mike looking for a lasso onto Zai. Won't be able to find it as he tethers away. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, Disruptor gets set up on by Universe. The follow-up damage is there. The Earth Spike will bring him down. TV takes a 2x Bloodlust. PPD will get finished off. Compliments of that Terra Blade. But now Arteezy on his way in. will bring down the Bat Rider. They converge onto Whitebeard. And again, they'll trade their captain for three. And even a buyback on PPD as he's hungry to do some crippling damage here. Uh, I think they, they sense blood right now, and they're they're going for that kind of killing blow, or at least trying to make sure Nyx Assassin just falls so far behind here. Another crit from our team with the finger. They bring down the Tinky Tide Hunter, and they're suddenly on the high ground, going for a tier 3 tower. Yeah, there's a glyph here, but uh, Nyx Assassin's in some trouble. Even as they come up, there will be no Ravage, and that's their big teamfight ability that they really need. Universe just zoning people out with the Astral Spirit, trying to use that Echo Stomp to create some space. As we've seen him do, the Glyph will be forced out. Tower goes down to half health, and they retreat right as Mike comes in looking for the lasso. Will use it onto PPD. He'll get mecked up. They'll try and keep him alive as best they can. Manages to get off a stun before he goes down. PPD surviving thanks to the support of Zai. It'll cost a Bat Rider his life. The sustain is just too much. Terra Blade secures the kill on line, but now they lose their Disruptor. Whitebeard isolated as they dive on him. Takes a coup de gras from the back, and now it's just TC. He'll make it back to the well. Tidehunter is respawned. But it just doesn't matter. His Ravage is up, but all of his friends are dead. Glyph has been used, and this will be Elena Barracks. Yeah, and uh, at this point, Mix Assassins just don't have the items to really turn this one around too well, but hey, I shall do everything he can. Yep, Ravage on four. TC's here for some follow-up damage. Can they find any counter kills, though? Zai running low on mana, only so much he can do, but they'll bring down TC. And uh, Tidehunter, well, stuck inside of the Cyclone. He'll probably be going down pretty soon as well. Ix Mike coming in. Does not have a lasso. Getting crit hard by Arteezy. The mech is cooled down. Universal use it to top everyone off. They're even diving tier 4 towers here. Few cares in the world for EG. Not even focusing the barracks. Just going for the hero kills. And Maybe they won't be able to get the barracks after all. But they've still done some pretty crippling damage here. Wisp will get glimpsed back. Kinetic Field comes out. The urn helping to heal him up. It won't be enough to stay alive. Fear on the back foot. He's trying to run out. Universe setting it up with the Echo, Slam, uh, Echo Stop again. As Whitebeard falls, Arteezy hops back into the fray, and EG will finally turn their focus onto the structures. Melee Barracks will go down, but not before Ush. He'll get taken out once more, and it's, it's just a bloodbath here in the Radiant base. Buyback on the Tidehunter this time. They'll finally be repelled, but I feel like that yeah. fight alone just speaks to the power of evil geniuses. Arteezy finally gets caught. He'll go down, but... Whew. That was just never-ending, just... EG just so tanky and durable. All the heals <laughs> just kept them. Look at this. Disruptor gets a, gets a blink dagger <laughs> off that counter kill onto uh, the Phantom Assassin, uh, ending the mega kill streak. So Yeah, that's why that's PPD's like, did we lose? <laughs> our our true just died. That's, uh, like, I, he's, he's not even their top net, net worth hero. They should be more worried about fear dying. He's 7 0 11. He's top of the net worth. He's the one you don't want dying right now. Yeah, and He's got a huge net worth and also a big kill streak. So. That's the hero which will give you 3k plus gold split between your team if you kill him, potentially. Yeah. So at least Snog gets something out of that. A Blink Dagger onto the Disruptor is, is something. Maybe not enough to totally change the tide of this game, but um, a step in the right direction at the very least. Now we'll see a Vladimir's Offering uh, come out onto the Brewmaster. Wisp is got the Buckler complete and uh, probably still likely to go for the Crimson Guard, but holding on to 1,800 gold, Zai will continue pooling it up. And what's the courier got coming? Oh, oh, that's a Crimson Guard recipe and a full vitality booster. So just Dyer's looking for that one last little piece. Attack. And uh, the Ring Dyer's of Health will secure the Crimson Guard for the Wisp already. Very early. Because the one thing, like that last fight when Nyx Assassins finally repelled EG was when Metamorph came up. They just needed that Terrorblade Metamorph damage. That really scared EG off and started getting them some kills, but you get the Crimson Guard up and, well, that's going to go a long way of just negating any of Terrorblade's impact in these fights. Yeah. Uh, now EG move into the Roche pit. Uh, Wisp is there just healing up Arteezy, who's tanking the Roche. And even though Roche got some buffs, he's still not unkillable, and they'll be able to secure it 
Phantom Assassin now with a Demon Edge to follow the Drum of Endurance the and uh, now an Aegis of the Immortal Dyer's to boot. That'll be your completed attack. Crimson Guard as the Vanguard gets delivered and not only does Wisp have the ability to counter the Terra Blade, but that's 1400 hit points on a Wisp. He's pretty damn tanky here. Yes, I. it's a really actually nice item for the Wisp. He's just going to use it casually at the bottom lane as they go in on Mike and Radiant's Mike's got no answer for this. Yeah, meanwhile in the mid, fight breaks out onto Fear and uh-oh, this could be the end of him. This is that big streak, can't get off the split and it will be Terror Blade that gets all that gold, although it's split around the team. I, it it's looks like they got like split. What, 400 each maybe? Yeah. It's not Four, quite as much. Each between. Okay, so... Like 2,400 each across the you know, four heroes, so it's 1,600. It's not too yeah, bad. Yeah, I think it was like 1,600 in the gold, a AOE gold, plus the gold they got from ending the streak, which was 800 for TC, so. Right, okay, It was a so. decent chunk. It was like 20, 2,400 gold total, maybe? Yeah. Um, but spread around. pretty spread around. Uh, so Blink Dagger is now picked up on the tide following that. Whitebeard has himself a point booster, and uh, we will see the Manta completed on TC. So bottom tier 2 tower will start to take some pressure as EG will relocate from the Wisp. We'll keep Arteezy alive as the Batrider comes in, and Zai may just have to play Sacrificial Lamb here. Meanwhile, in the top lane, TC, Terrorblade in some trouble. He's all by his lonesome, and he'll get fingered down. Universe, he'll get glimpsed back. Ravage is there, it connects on Arteezy and Zai. And maybe they can turn this around. Zai somehow still alive, manages to get off the Crimson Guard before he falls down. Arteezy takes a 2x, won't be able to finish off the kill. Universe needs the Echo Stomp to keep Arteezy alive. He's life stealing, still has the uh, Aegis of the Immortal. It will expire now. Universe with the Earth Splitter flying through. Whitebeard will lose a little bit of mana. Fluff off to the side, just manages to juke the Earth Splitter. Will live, but not for too long as Arteezy comes up and. Chops him down. So EG with another successful fight down here. Took him a little while to get their ducks attack. in a row, but the delay was worth it as they secured that kill onto the Brew. Or pardon me, onto the TB as now Brew goes in right onto Mike, connects with the boulder. Bat Rider will take a tumble. Ravage has already been deployed. So this mid lane of Rax in some trouble. Glyph has cooled down, but I think Sna kind of on their last leg here, gods. It feels like it. Maybe one last fight in them. Terrorblade needs his Metamorph in 20 seconds if they want to try and hold this and take a fight. And they'll lose Raxes, then maybe Radiance make a last stand for an another Radiance for another lane of Raxes. But in bottom lane, they in top lane both still have T2 towers, so still gonna be some time before EG can necessarily get a second second set of Raxes. Radiance but they're just so strong in these team fights that they're not even too worried about actual, actual Raxes at the time being. So, glimpse back onto Universe, but EG, they're ready to fight. Artor goes right in onto Fluff, will crit him down, and that will be the first kill to start off this fight. The rest of the Sneaky Nyx Assassins headed towards the well without a Ravage. They simply just can't take a team fight. White Point and Beard will actually TP out Arteezy, going pretty deep, will survive as a huge Earth Spike comes out from PPD on three. EG diving pretty deep once more. Need to be careful not to feed too much away. Sunder comes out onto Fear. He'll live at about half health. The finger on the Bat Rider to bring him down. Now pressing into the well. That'll be the Echo Slam to set it up. Tide Hunter gets crit down. Whitebeard, maybe the next target of choice. Instead, TC will get turned into a frog. Ribbit, ribbit as he moves up to the high ground. And EG will back out. Whitebeard taunting him a little bit. Oh, but EG, they, they won't fall for it. It's just making Fountain Farming a challenge now. It, it makes Fountain Farming more fun, is, is how I see the new hill, but they're going to keep on diving. Our tour, he wants TC, and without a Sunder, there's no way out for TC. Whitebeard still just sitting around on top of the hill and hoping something comes his way. No multicast onto OTZ. That would have been a kill if he gets a two or a three-timer. Maybe not a two. Would have been close then, but a three-time for sure. Yep. So, EG, 35 to 12. They're having some fun with it here. Sneaky Nix Assassins hanging on for dear life and perhaps hoping to end some more big streaks to get back into this game. But Whitebeard will be chopped down once more. Another Primal Split is deployed as a Ravage flies through. That'll be the end of the dominating streak onto Arteezy. And uh, Ush will find himself 1,500 gold richer. Buyback now onto the Disruptor. But EG will start to mount their defense. Zai comes in, and well, they'll lose their Bat Rider. Mike just too squishy. A triple kill for Fear. They'll go back in onto Fluff to Fear. 12, 1, and 14. The GG is finally called. Snaz had enough mucking around, getting wrecked around in their own base as an ultra kill comes out for Fear. And EG looking damn good in technically game two of this best of five series. Yeah, uh, this is the EG. I think people have just come to know that very dominant performance. Definitely the heavy favorites in this American qualifier for Starlighter and showing it here, even on 6.82.
Um, slightly different draft. I mean, going going back for the Wisp and also pulling out the PA, which we haven't seen in a long time. We saw a lot of it back at the Summit, but definitely has fallen off. Maybe going to see a resurgence with uh, the Wisp synergy in the mid lane. And then, uh, obviously, all around EG just kind of very dominant play. Fear just incredible performance on the Brewmaster especially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know that there's uh, too much else to say about uh, that that match as the end just kind of turned into a bloodbath. Uh, Universe also having a perfect game going 5-0 and 24. Off to a slow start on that Elder Titan, but boy did he recover after uh, EG kind of hit their stride. That's game two. It's a best of five. EG had a one game advantage, so now just one game away from securing their seat in the Kiev Land Finals for Star Ladder Season 10. Can Sna take us into another match to extend this series? We'll see if they can take a win here coming up in Game 3.